Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video we're going to be taking a closer look at another fundamental called forge welding. So I'm going to be working this piece of bar stock down mainly just into a flat that we're going to eventually turn into a loop back onto itself and then weld it in. Now this is not a full tutorial on all the different types of welds there are out there. I've done an entire forge welding series that you can find here on the channel um, and you're welcome to check out the playlist on that. I will have Jessica put that in the cards for me. The main thing I want to take and share here is about welding in general, what you're looking for. Now this here is an easy way of making something. You're really just you know forging in a situation that you can spin around on itself. You don't even really have to thin it out like this. You could just bend the end of the bar back on itself and then forge weld it in. I was in this particular video, I was preparing for a forge welding class or a class where I was teaching all the fundamentals and so I just wanted to have a quick little example of something that I could put on my example key ring for all the students. So again, you may want to do something like just simply bend the piece back on itself and forge weld it right in. But I decided to do a little bit more complex of an initial forge weld. When you are forge welding, it is important to have a good clean fire and that you do not overwork your piece. What do I mean by that? A lot of people will spend a long time multiple heats getting a piece of steel to the point where they're comfortable with forge welding it um, which then fatigues the material and then they end up having problems later on when they go to actually forge weld the piece that things aren't sticking right or things got heavy have a real heavy layer of scale because of lots of times that that thing was sitting in the fire and just collecting scale and more oxides on the outside of it. So you want to get as you want to get to your final destination kind of as quickly and efficiently as possible in order to forge weld cleanly. So that's one tech that's one trick there. The next trick with forge welding is proper heat management. You want to have enough heat into it that the surfaces of the steel have become have started to become molten, but not so much heat into it that it's starting to run off. So that is kind of so in the blacksmithing we generally call that like a sticky heat, if you will. Now you want to go up just a bit above the sticky heat and then bring it out and get it welded. Now you'll see here in this next clip I bring it up to a light welding heat and I come out I got a little radius block there to weld it in and so this is a light welding heat. You can see it's really bright it's almost white but that is like a lemon yellow that you're looking at there and that is the beginning stages of the welding heat. The next heat we're gonna bring it up a lot hotter we're going to bring this up into the white zone, like a white heat, uh, and then you will see the difference there. And it's going to come out probably screaming hot, like you see it there. It's really screaming hot, and that there is a full welding heat. If you also notice, this was not sparkling all over the place. So this was not like a ball of fire where you know there was a bunch of sparks coming off of it. If you have that, you have too much oxygen in your fire and you need to reduce the oxygen content in your fire by turning down your blower or not cranking so hard on the handle. So I'll get that little radius block off the anvil. Later I put it back on. I'm just taking it off for the time being and then dressing this up. Now most likely with mild steel you will have to take multiple little welding heats to dress out any of the scarfs that you have made in the scarf joints, but that is a pretty common occurrence. You'll see I'll take this back up to another heat here soon when I adjust the eye on it itself. So I'm going to put a little pin through it 
it was at a really light welding heat when I brought it out and now it's below a welding heat. It's below that lemon yellow color. But I'm just doing that to just dress up the actual eye itself. Drop the pin out. And there you have it, you know. It's a really easy way of actually putting an eye on the end of something and gaining extra mass in a bar that you otherwise might not have had on the end. So it's a, that's a pretty handy little technique. The other thing about forge welding when you're getting started is to keep your anvil as close to your fire source as possible. This will help you out greatly with achieving your first weld. You have between about three seconds and about three to seven seconds to get a weld in on this size bar stock. I'm forging on some 3 8 inch bar stock so again you have about three seconds there. So you really have got to be quite speedious to get this welded in and done and so you can't really be monkeying around with tools. You need to have all your stuff set up and ready to go long before you pull the piece out of the fire. That is called orchestrating the process. And that is one of the hardest things to learn in blacksmithing is the orchestration of the process. So if you can get all your stuff set up in advance, have your hammer where it's easily grabbed, and you can get the timing down and the heat down, you will make the weld. It's a little frustrating at the beginning, but with a little bit of practice, you can get it just fine. So that's it for today. I hope you all enjoyed this video. As always, God bless you, and we'll catch you on the next one.